You know, last year we had the opportunity to hear from Andreas Duani, and uh, he, he really challenged us to find the leadership within ourselves to, to lead Mobile, and particularly downtown Mobile, to realize its potential. I had a really noted planner who said to me one day that Mobile probably has more potential as a historic city, more potential than any, any other city in America. That's a pretty significant thing to say when you, when you, when you, when you understand in America. But you see the people who were just awarded here today and their commitment to downtown, and you watch that wonderful video that talks about how focused we are to make this a great place to be. And you have to really start to learn about what is it that makes a great city besides the passion. At some point, we have to take the time and we have to put the tools in place. That's what Elizabeth was talking about earlier. So my challenge to you before I introduce the speaker is to figure out what your role is going to be. Uh, when she talks about form-based codes, you know, I'm not an architect, but I came to really appreciate what form-based codes were after Hurricane Katrina. But if you don't know what form-based codes are, find out. And let me give you a simple definition. Typically, buildings are oriented within themselves. What form-based codes are, are about creating a collection of buildings that are oriented to the street in such a way that creates a sense of place. So when you think about form-based codes, think sense of place. And that's what we had this amazing opportunity to create in downtown Mobile. And the, the Elizabeth and her team are beginning to put the tools in place to allow all of us to begin to understand what our role is and helping put those tools in place so that 15 years from now, we'll look back and know that we did the right thing by putting those tools in place. You know, Andreas talked to us about vision, but Chris today, and you can read more about him in the, in the, uh, in the note on, your, on, your, on the table, Chris is, um, is extremely important to us, and I hope that you find that having him here is a big deal after you hear what he's got to say. I had the opportunity to spend a couple of hours with him yesterday, and uh, it was very inspiring. While sociologists and, and architects and other specialists often in these, what we call these soft disciplines, come together and they celebrate urban life, you know, about uh, battling suburban life and bringing people down back to downtowns. Um, I think you know, that's important, but bottom line, folks like us, the people in this room, we want to understand you know, what's the business case for creating those aesthetics. Well, what's so great about what Chris brings to the table is that he understands what kind of projects and what kind of vision you can bet on that will ultimately have a return on investment. You know, he's had the opportunity to provide direction to cities all over America. He's a professor, a head of the graduate real estate program at the University of Michigan. But for more than 20 years, he was managing director of the, of the largest independent real estate uh, advisory firm in the country. Uh, they had worked over, over 600 projects a year for developers, corporations, and municipalities. So he's not just about bringing vision, he's about bringing meat on the table for the communities that he works with. Um, I want to say that one of the reasons I think it's important what he's got to say is because he's not only a real estate developer, but he's advised real estate developers for years. Um, he can make an argument for ROI. At the end of the day, for those of us who care about this region, who care about Mobile, and recognize that Mobile has an opportunity to lead the, lead the Gulf Coast region, lead Alabama, lead this nation, I think what Chris has to say today will hopefully help you find within yourself the role you can play to help us realize that dream, okay? So that's what Chris is all about. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Ricky, and I want to thank everybody who's been just so welcoming to me. This certainly puts a new definition on Southern hospitality. Uh, Elizabeth, Sam, it's been a remarkable two days, and it's, it's obvious that what you bring here is just phenomenal excitement about your downtown, and just watching the projects that you just, that you just honored shows that there's a lot of progress even in these tough economic times. Well, that's the good news. Uh, there's some bad news. And that is that your downtown, and therefore your region, is not only being lapped by your main competition, you've been lapped by your main competition as far as addressing the market need for great downtowns and for walkable urban places. Now, the good news on that is that there's a lot to learn from places that are very close and that you have the confidence, or you should have the confidence that you're gonna get there. But just as Ricky said, 
This is possibly the, the port city, the water-based town with a you know, 300 year history. It's the only one possibly in the country that has not taken advantage of your incredible strengths. The first and foremost of those strengths is of course your history. And what that really translates into, it's not just fuzziness, it's your memory of this place. At your art center, your next project, the uh, next show is about memory. And ultimately that's what it's really all about. We are just composite, you know, we are all composites of our memories. And why most of you are here today is because you have a memory of what downtown, uh, of, uh, of what downtown Mobile used to be 20, 30, 50 years ago. Probably more in the range of 40, 50 years ago. And that memory is a tremendous asset that gets you to invest in this downtown. The second strength is your grid. You've got a great walkable urban grid that you were given by your ancestors. And the third, of course, is the waterfront. People would kill for your waterfront. It's gold. And of course, it's the ultimate reason that you exist. So I'd like to welcome you to the future of what metropolitan development is all about in this country and how we're building this country. Because really redeveloping and bringing downtown and downtown adjacent mobile to critical mass is a major factor in your economic future. First, what is the built environment? Built environment is real estate, your house, this building, and the infrastructure that supports the, uh, that, that uh, supports real estate. So the roads, the sewer lines, the broadband. The thing about the built environment is that it represents 35% of the entire assets of this country. It is the largest asset class. If you took all the New York Stock Exchange companies and all the NASDAQ companies, took their capitalized value and doubled them, the built environment's larger. That's why we in real estate are very proud of the fact that we caused two of the last three recessions, including this last one. The problem is, is that that 35% is not re-engaged. Normally, real estate pulls the economy out of the recession and supercharges it. Right now, the 35% is on the sidelines. And the reason it's on the sidelines is because we in real estate don't know how to give the market what it now wants, which is different than what we learned over the last 30, 40 years. Another important point to note is how important transportation is to development. Basically, transportation drives development. Uh, to, to modify a famous Winston Churchill quote, we first build our transportation systems and then it molds our metro regions. Well, over the last 50, 60 years, you here in Mobile have been building basically one transportation system, roads for your cars and trucks. When you build one transportation system like that, the only thing you're gonna get is what's referred to as drivable suburban development. And you all know what that is, modular, segregated uh, development that you can only get to by driving. But there's another way of building the built environment that we've been building for, oh, 6,000 years. And it's where you have multiple modes of transportation that will drive the, other, the only other alternative of, of, of how we can build the built environment, which is referred to as walkable urbanism, which is at least five times more dense, many times 10 and 15 and 20 times more dense than drivable suburban, but it mixes uses within close proximity there you can, so that you can walk to most places. And if you can't walk, that there will be some form of transit or maybe bicycling to get you there. Cars are still very much employed, very important. It's just that you're not dictated to that you can only use a car. Because right now, all of you in this room, uh, probably without exception, you must use your car. This is Big Brother speaking. 